Todd Harden. Thank you for watching the Give Me A Whole Year Wrestling Podcast. Hello and a very warm welcome to the Give Me A Whole Year Wrestling Podcast. My name is Ant and today I'm joined by... who's trying to keep it quiet while his fans are really loud and, and not disturb his housemate. How's it going, guys? Uh, yeah, good. Did you enjoy the AEW this evening? Yeah, really good, man. Yeah, really, really good. I enjoyed it a lot. Um, it was good storytelling all around, I think. It was, man. It was, again, another solid show, pack full of storytelling, building up to All Out, and even the Battle Royale in All Out sounds incredible. Mm, yeah, just just fantastic work, you know, across the board here tonight. And Absolutely. the MDF stuff's great. Leading into the Moxley feud, the uh, Dark Order stuff's fantastic. That yeah. Brody Lee promo was a highlight for me. Cool. Uh, really surprised that Sammy got the victory. Um, good uh, continuity with uh, Matt Cardona officially sort of joining, supporting the um, the uh, Nightmare Collective, the Nightmare Family. So that was really cool. Yeah. Adam Page, Page turns on the Elite. There's just so much in there, isn't there, man, for a two-hour program. Like, it even is. what you just said, it's just like, it's jam-packed with, with awesome storytelling. Yeah, fantastic, fantastic stuff. If you haven't joined us before, we're going to whiz through our full review of the show, and then afterwards we'll take care of any of your questions. But thank you, everyone, for joining us in chat. Maven, Wrestle Story, and Alex, we do appreciate it. Uh, if more people join, then obviously that's awesome. And if you're watching this in the future, leave a comment, let you know what you think, and leave a like if you enjoy yeah, the video. So it really helps us out. Uh, right, first of all, we go straight into the gauntlet mat, which, which has been advertised. This is for a chance at the AEW tag titles are all out. Uh, first up, we have the Young Bucks versus the Natural Nightmares. Um, yeah, that was, that was a good match all in all. Uh, like I say, the night, Natural Nightmares are impressing me more and more as I see them as a team. Uh, every time Dustin you know, comes out, he's entertaining. He had a he had to get a breather when he was facing the Young Bucks, which was pretty entertaining. Uh, QT Marshall, like I say, I was really not sold on him in the very beginning of his run, uh, but he seems to be really coming to his own. Um, good, solid all-round match. The better one of the two for me of these uh, introductory matches. Uh, okay, yeah, I thought there was. I thought there was all right. I think. Um, I think. I think it. I think it missed a opportunity here to do something with Dark Order because obviously mm -hmm. like Cody, not Cody, Dustin and uh, QT Marshall were both laid out before, mm -hmm. uh, by the end of last week's episode and I thought it would have been interesting to have done something with that but they didn't, but it was a decent a decent match. Mm -hmm. Yeah it was yeah all in all very very clever you know very very cleverly done anything with the books in, you know there's some good storytelling there, um, obviously Dustin's facial expressions, his work He's fantastic, um, yeah. Really, really sold on this one as an introductory match for the for the uh, for the broadcast. And the one with the BTE trigger on QT Marshall. Next up, we have the best friends come out. Mm, mm. Best friends put on a fantastic showing in this one. Obviously, very surprised at the end result of this, uh, but again, really good storytelling involving Hangman Page, who's obviously a central focus for our review uh, this evening uh, or morning rather. But, uh, but yeah, just really solidly done. Um, best friends, I think they're trying to push them to the moon, trying to do quite a lot with them at the moment. Yeah. Uh, whether they're ready for that pressure it remains to be seen. I know you're not always sold on their matches, but I think they can be really good. Um, the books, you seem to be adapting week on week uh, to, you know, kind of high spots, American audience kind of, you know, sort of popping the audience sort of vibe. And I think that's that's really working in their favour. Uh, once again, though, the storytelling here is paramount. And the uh, the end result where Hangman costs the books is the is the real talking point here. Absolutely. Uh, so the match itself, I thought, was a bit slow starting off. Uh, but it did really pick off. And one part that was really good was when one of the Jacksons sent on a Tommy code off the apron. Mm -hmm. That was off the sorry off the top rope of a, a draping uh, one of the best friends. It was brilliant, man. I mean, it really got me into the match again. And then when they go for the Meltzer driver, um, Hangman Page is at ringside holding on to Nick's leg. 
Mm, mm, yeah, so, no, that was that was crazy, man. That's that's absolutely crazy. It was a continuation uh, from last week, where you know the FTR were talking to Page backstage and saying that they wanted to face the best and all that sort of stuff. Mm. Big Ten here. Yeah, huge. I mean, it's a huge moment. There's obviously a promo, a fantastic promo later on, uh, where the Bucks confront Page and he's looking into this broken mirror uh, in a kind of cheesy. Um, Almost, who's the who's the guy that had the broken mirror gimmick and had it all on his face? Um, oh, Mojo yeah, Rawley. <laughs> Mojo Rawley, like cheesy, but not not done nearly as bad as that. Um, <laughs> Absolutely like, not. You know, confronting confronting this change in Hangman's character that he's obviously going through, which I think was fantastic. And like and, I said, this Hangman was, looked distraught about it as well, man. This was the primary story and the most entertaining storyline this evening on this broadcast. Yeah, one of. I mean, it's such a massive thing that's happening. And it looks like we're getting Hangman 10 in on the Elite, which I just sort of didn't want to see. But I'm fine with it. I mean, look, they tell a good story, and and this is how you do it. And Hangman was acting really well. He looked distraught, man. Mm, Absolutely. Uh, Then, obviously, FTR come out against Best Friends, accompanied by Tully Blanchard. FTR win. I'd sort of wish this was a bit more squashy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you like I say, you... You definitely, you definitely said that, and you know, I know you would like, would have liked that, but unfortunately, you know, like I say, I think it's building, trying to build the best friends up, uh, trying to build them as a valid, you know, sort of set of title contenders. So they um, don't go look we- looking weak against uh, Santana and Ortiz when they have that yeah. match. But actually, yeah. I, I don't think they need to go in looking that strong against them, and then they could pick up the win and shock mm. everyone. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Mm. Well, like I say, I think we'll see what happens. You know, it remains to be seen. I think the the best friends are certainly uh, one of the more underrated teams on AEW, and we'll see what happens to them in the future. But I, I think they're future champions for sure. Uh, but they perhaps haven't come into their own to the level that Books or, of course, FTR have. Uh, Rock and they're not, roll. They're not, they're not quite at that level yet. No, not at all. Um, I don't. I don't know if I see them as future champions. To be perfectly honest, but hey ho. Uh, next up, we get a Darby Allen video package. He's skating around with some thumbtacks in his back and a mask of Ricky Starks on his face. Indeed, indeed. And he uh, jumps off a bridge. Uh, I think that's in is it in Seattle. Um, but uh, but yeah, it was very high. No matter what, it was an incredibly high bridge. And of course, Jericho and Taz not Jer- sorry not Taz, but Jericho sold that to the moon, saying, "You know, is there anything this guy won't do?" Jr. was also in on that. Uh, you know, it was a very short promo, but I guess it got the point that you know Darby Allen was set to destroy Ricky Stark. So yeah, fair enough. It's good that he's making these little promos. I, I wish he wouldn't do as, as dangerous stuff because you could actually Jesusly like badly hurt yourself from something like that. And let's hope that doesn't happen. Next up was Lance Archer versus Sean Maluta. Yeah, Sean Maluta, former NXT guy. I remember him on a couple of NXT broadcasts myself. Uh, decent enough talent. I think he's got some. I think he's related to the Usos and that kind of that kind of uh, ilk. Uh, so I think he has. He was in the talent. Unwanted, wasn't he? He's, he, the unwanted. Mm-hmm. What's the unwanted? That's the part of the team that he was in. What, uh, what were they? Called? Who else was in that? I can't remember. The unwanted. I'm going to look into that because that's interesting. I, I've never heard of the unwanted. So Lance Archer wins by pinfall uh, again with the claw slams, making Lance Archer look like a beast. Uh, Jake gets to the mic uh, to the mic and. Uh, uh, talks a bit, but basically he's building up for the Casino Battle Royale at All Out. Um, oh yeah, they were in they were in Evolve. Interesting. So they never go. made it into. So Eddie Kingston was in that stable. That's interesting. St- uh, yeah. Shane, Shane Strickland, Colby Carino as well. Very interesting. Cool. There we go. And both of them are gonna. Well, no, actually, he's not gonna be, is it? But Lance Archer sells with Jake the Snake that he is entering the battle royale. He's basically the first announced, along with Darby Allen, um, which is great. I mean, two big guys. You could say they could win it. And speaking of people that could win it, enter Brian Cage, Taz, and Ricky Starks. Mm, mm, Roberts yeah, described them as the Flintstones. Yeah, I like I like Team Taz. I think it's really good. It's shaping up really well. But uh, yeah, Jake described him as a thick Flintstones. That was entertaining. I think it was great to see all these guys come to blows. Obviously, Darby comes out and attacks Starks. He does. I think it really, I think it really, really builds. Um, you know, really, really builds uh, both sets of sort of factions, and potentially, you know, any one of these guys could walk away with it, and we'd believe it. You know what I mean? I mean, I'm I'm just blown away at how much I care about a battle royal. The mm-hmm. I, like, I've never seen a battle royale with so much talent in it and so many storylines going into it 
And I don't know how they're going to be able to do the match to reach my expectations because there's so many crossover stories happening here. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so Darby Allen comes out. He, what did he do? He drop kicked Ricky Starks, knocked his shoes off. Mm-hmm. And continue yeah, attacking great. him into well, the back. Again, a lot of luck, a lot of luck tonight, and a lot of like, you know, I mean, that probably wasn't planned, the shoe thing, but it, it worked, <laughs> and it worked a treat, I think, for the entertainment value. Look great. Of, of that move. So, yeah, fantastic work all around from everybody. Uh, you know, I think it was great to see, like, it was great to see the Starks Derby thing continued. Obviously, seeing the two big men, you know, potentially seeing Cage face off with uh, Archer is an incredible, uh, tantalizing idea. Yeah, I mean, the, the Lance Archer match itself was just a squash. It was just was what it was. Yeah, it's what he's doing all the time. It wasn't very good, but it, it just a squash. Um, next up, we get uh, we get to see MJF briefly, but then we get a video package of Thunder Rosa, who is coming in mm. to fight Hikaru Shida for her title. Um, excited, man. And they have the voice of Billy Corgan in. It seems like MWA are doing a lot of work with AEW to, to put over like the guys. It. Fantastic! It was you know great to see Billy Corgan's blessing on on, a, on an AEW program, and of course, um, you know uh, I know that uh, that um, Nick Aldis, who's obviously been on our channel, and we've done an interview with him. If you want to go back and check that out, he um, he's given his blessing and said, you know, that it was always we were always an open door. We always said we work with other people, and um, so you, and obviously you've seen Nick Aldis on AEW before, so there's potential for that again, yeah. um, and for potential of course if, if NWA you know stays dormant for a while for, for us to see more regular um AW, uh, sorry nwa talent on there you know Dude, i mean if it, if, um, it makes if, perfect um, business sense for them because they're getting people who, uh, aw has a bigger audience it's getting people to watch their talent and they might enjoy thunder rosa enough to go check her out on nwa that makes absolutely. sense absolutely absolutely and it's great it to see sense. obviously if um guys like um Wade Barrett, who of course were contracted to NWA as commentator, he's obviously just appeared on NXT. But if he doesn't decide to take, if he decides not to take up a full time role with NXT, there's every reason, you know, he could go on to AEW and work for AEW, and of course have a good career there. And there's numerous other talents, of course, uh, that are in a uh, NWA uh, that could do fantastic work. Yeah, yeah. So fingers crossed to carry on with this crossover because I think it works bigly in NWA's favour and it freshens up the AEW programming. So why mm. not? It's everyone, everyone benefits from this. Uh, then we get Maxwell Jacob Frieder, Friedman making his entry to the ring, MJF. Um, this is about the paradigm shift being banned from the main match. Uh, MJF talked, again, a wonderful promo, but he did talk quite a long time tonight. I thought that could have been shot on by a minute or so. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I actually gave. I actually think it was given the right amount of time. I really like MJF's promos. I think he's the best in the game right now. Um, I thought it was it was a good length. Um, I thought the banter between the two of them, the jokes between the two of them, some was, of it was, was really funny. Was funny. Yeah, you could yeah. tell they were trying to crack each other at times. Actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think that's really cool. You know, they yeah. definitely had definitely had some good moments. I'm really looking forward to seeing how that dynamic that they have uh, plays out in the ring. Yeah, well, obviously he said that he's a glorified goon, but then he basically gets him to sign the contract and they're all laughing about it, that he signed the contract and can't believe that he's done it. And then um, John has the final laugh because he says about page 17, which is a page that he's added into the contract. And basically that means he's getting a match with the lawyer of MJF next week and he's allowed to do the paradigm shift. Yeah, absolutely, which is entertaining. The lawyer is, um, uh, by all accounts, he is a, a former WB extra uh, he's also a friend of um, Matt Cardona, so that explains his appearances in AEW recently. So I know he's, he's he can he can probably take a bump or two. So it'll be very interesting to see what happens there in that match. Yeah, it's great, and and I can't wait to see what happens. We then had a promo from Sano Ortiz uh, talking up about their feud with the best friends and them destroying Sue's car, saying that the wish Sue was in the car at the time. And then Eddie Kingston uh, gets a promo as well when he says about everyone talking on the internet, talking up the new faction and what it could mean, who it could be, um, but tells people to grow up and and that sort of stuff doesn't matter. They're just here to uh, to to show what they can do in the ring. Uh, mm. This all leads to Brian Pillman Jr., Griff Garrison, Joey Janela, and Sonny Kiss versus the Butcher and the Blade and the Lucha Brothers. Yeah, yeah, fantastic work. I think, again, to see uh, what Sonny Kiss and jo- Joey Janela can do on a big stage is fantastic. Obviously, the Lucha Bros, anytime you see Pentagon in the ring is, is fantastic and the, the work Mind blowing. they do is amazing. I'm really, I'm really sold on this Eddie Kingston, Butcher and the Blade 
faction, you know, just having them in the faction because I was I wasn't sure what they would do long term, especially without Ali now. Um, so, you know, and their kind of place in AEW and it feels like under Eddie Kingston or with Eddie Kingston, they certainly have a place now uh, as part of this faction. Well, I uh, feel like every week they're proving themselves to be an incredible tag team. And, you know, you yeah. go back to that Young Bucks match, which was outstanding. And and they're, they're sort of really, they're, they're really proving themselves in the ring, you know? Yeah, they've done very, they've done very well and they should be very proud of themselves. Uh, obviously, they've got, um, you know, they've got a lot of experience now in AEW doing well. And I, uh, I hope, you know, I hope we see them in more prominent positions going forward. But yeah, once again, same for um, Sonny Kiss and Joey Janela. Um, you know, uh, or, or, you know, seeing seeing Jungle Man in there. <laughs> Griff Garrison, yeah. Well. Griff Garrison is great. He's a great talent. Talented just, man. He deserves to have that 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 uh, that uh, main stage. Uh, the package pile driver on the apron from Pentagon. <laughs> What a spot. Wow. Well, wow. uh, to me, this was actually a better match than the opening gauntlet match, any of them matches. I thought it was a really good match. Uh, the Butcher and the Blade and the Lucha Bros won by pinfall with a double team hanging underhook brain buster and the double stomp uh, uh, combo as well. Mm-hmm. Great. Fantastic. Like I say, fantastic work. This, they're really high on spots. Uh, really high on, uh, on on good spots on AEW, and, and they seem to be managing them very well. You know, these guys on the indies have spent years on the indies um, perfecting their craft, and uh, you know it's great. You know, they they do handle spots, pile drivers, of course, uh, and things like that of that nature that have always been sort of taboo. Certainly in the last ten years of wrestling, um, AEW guys are handling them well, doing them consistently, and, and and having a great job. You know, I mean, you know, seeing Dustin Rhodes do a blooming Canadian Destroyer. You know, awesome. Clearly, he's been training hard and working hard, and I think all of them, yep. all the AEWs, have, have that really strong work ethic. Yeah. After the match, Eddie Kingston announces that the his stable, all five of them, whatever you want to call them, will be in the battle royal. So we're getting Pentagon, Ray Phoenix, the Butcher, the Blade, and Eddie Kingston in the battle royal with these mm-hmm. other five guys. I mean, any one of them could win the title, mate. Absolutely, absolutely, and I really do believe that. I really do believe that any one of them can win, and that it's is mad. fantastic. That is really interesting. Um, is. Because... I assume we're going to get. We need some faces in it. We've only got Darby Allen so far. Yeah, yeah. Well, we'll see. We'll see what happens. You know. I assume Jungle Express might be in it, or someone like mm-hmm. that. You know. I would so yeah, I would assume. So, yeah. It'd be nice to see if Sonny Kiss and Joey Janela actually would be in it because they they put on a good show in the Battle Royal. So I'd like to see them in it, but I don't know if we will. Mm-hmm. Then the Dark Order make their entrance. Um, they come out with a casket and some lawn mowers. Yeah, the lawn mowers I wasn't sure about, and I don't know if anybody on this stream is going to come up with an answer for that because what we thought they were for, uh, for Matt Hardy to use, turned out not to be the case. Mm. Uh, but but this was my, this was pretty entertaining. It was turned out to be ten. Uh, um, who was in there wearing a um, a Cody Rhodes jacket and uh, with a fake or what I hope and what we all hope is a fake because um, <laughs> no one would seriously get that right. Yeah. Um, so you know, but that was it was quite entertaining. And then and then Brody Lee fires off with an absolutely brilliant promo. Uh, I, I thought this was fantastic. And the the fire in his voice um, reminds me of, of you know an early Bray Wyatt or whatever you know in terms of when it, when it was sort of exciting to, to listen to him and watch him, um, you know, and, and uh, it was great. To, in fact, I, I would venture to say Brody Lee is a better promo than Bray um, at the moment, certainly, because he just he just has fire. He has a renewed energy about him uh, when he comes out with the Dark Order and he says, you know, the Dark Order is the best thing on television and I am the best champion. And that's, you know, it's believable right now for, for independent fans and wrestling fans like ourselves who, who, you know, do see a product outside of WWE. And I'm a big WWE guy. I, you know, I, I do fall for that kind of, and I've used it before, the sort of the sugar sweetness of WWE, the quick fix. You know, I'm very much a WWE guy. I, I get it, but but really, you know, AEW are proving that there is life outside of WWE, and there is, you know, a way for for talents like Brody Lee to have a second life and a, and a real, you know, become really legitimate top top guys um, outside of, of that of that sphere. Um, and, and his promo tonight was fantastic. Yeah, I, 
One thing that concerns me is, so the reason for the lawnmowers there and the Lamborghini that they very quickly showed was because apparently I think Stu Grayson, who did cut a re- not Stu Grayson, Evil Uno, who cut a really good promo at the start to sort of build up Brody Lee's entrance, have been celebrating all weekend buying Lamborghinis and lawnmowers. Mm-hmm. I'm, a li- I'm a little concerned that the sort of fun dark order that we see on being the elite and the sort of silliness of Dark Order that we see on Being the Elite are starting to transfer into the program ever so slightly. Also through the promo, you had, oh, who was it? It wasn't Stu Grayson, was it? Was it Stu Grayson? who? No, it was one of the others um, yeah. who was really excited and got on the mic and was like, oh, yeah, I've had a really good time. I've been buzzing, partying since Saturday, blah, 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 blah. And then got a clothesline, uh, a lariat from Brody Lee. I, w- I worry slightly that they're starting to bring in a little bit too much silly. Potentially, potentially. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, But Anna Jay, man. Anna Jay come out. She looks boss, man. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. Yeah, we haven't really talked about Anna Jay, a a great addition to the Dark Order. Mm. Uh, You know, she looks fantastic, fantastic. And and then they obviously, Dark Order certainly needs some female uh, representation. And it looks like they're also getting Tay Conti, which we saw later on as well. They handed over. Now they, her and Anna Jay tag teamed in the... um, in the tag team cup. So I wonder if we're going to get more of a tag division in the women's division, which is, which is cool. If that's what we're doing, that's fine. Yeah, absolutely. Um, then out comes, cause obviously they dragged Tony to the ring. Um, yeah, it was John definitely. Silver that was celebrating since Sunday. That's the one that was yeah. cr- over the top celebrating. Then we get the Scorpio sky comes out. Matt Cardona comes out. Um, Dustin Rhodes comes out and QT Marshall comes out. And basically we get in dark order versus them next week. Yeah, it's, it's a big kind of feud. Um, yeah, I think that's I think that's being saved to All Out, which is next weekend. Um, is it, no, yeah. I think it's on next week. They can't be okay. doing that at All Out. Uh, I think uh, I think that's what I saw, but obviously we'll see what happens next week. I think it's next week. Um, then we get a, the great hang, Hangman Adam Page being interviewed backstage. He's starting to act, answer the question, but then the Young Bucks come out and are having a proper go at him. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it was it was a great promo, um, great from the books, real emotion, uh, you know, real friendship, real emotion being tested, a bit similar to when Adam Cole was in the uh, being the elite and the elite, um, they kind of you know they they kind of had to fracture that friendship for the end of of Adam Cole's run in in, in the elite, but obviously this is slightly different but similar vibe in terms of. Um, the the emotion that's there and the genuine emotion that they're kind of playing on and the friendship that they're playing on uh, to to you know to to build this story uh, really enjoyed like I say the mirror uh, the shot and I really enjoyed the, just the fire and the and the kind of emotion of, of the young bucks who were really genuinely feel like they were hurt they made us believe you know great acting from from all three really yeah uh, yeah especially Paige man Paige is great and end, end of a friendship. Yeah, uh, the other thing that they did is they obviously threw the uh, alcohol at him, told him that he was an alcoholic and that he they, he's out of the elite. They've basically said mm-hmm. he is out of the elite and then we got the broken mirror shot. And it really feels like Adam Page as a character is really fractured in a great way, in, a, in an interesting way. Mm, absolutely, I think I'm really interested in it, yeah. Next up, we get Dr. Britt Baker, DMD, coming out. She gets on the mic and uh, says that if Big Swell can beat her team tonight, then she can have any match that she wants. And that's the match that we get next. Big Swall versus Dr. Britt Baker, DMD, Penelope Ford, and Reba. Yeah, it was a, it was a squash, really, from, from Big Swall. Um, Reba gets absolutely destroyed. Um and and yeah, you know, it serves a purpose in terms of adding to the storyline. You know, we will we'll be surprised to see uh, Britt Baker in the ring for All Out, uh, obviously next Saturday. Uh, but I think that's what we're we're, we're getting. You know, I think that's yeah. what we're getting. Um, and I, and I'm ple- I'll be pleased to see Britt Baker back in the ring. A big swall hasn't really swayed me right now as as of yet. Uh, but I think she's a great character. I think she's good on promos. Uh, but obviously, for me. Um, in the ring, I'm, I'm I'm waiting to see what happens with her in the future. Uh, but, but I agree, right now- and the problem is this match was a bit of a it was a bit of a jerky match, which is fine. But then you don't have any serious ladies matches mm. on the card. Mm. 
And mm. that, you know, people are always saying about uh, the sort of negativity towards a women's division in AEW, and that's part of the reason why, you know? Mm. Absolutely, absolutely. There is some negativity, and, and, and there's a lot of work to be done beyond Brandy's work and, the, and what the work Brandy's trying to do, because, of course, I think it's made her look like she's trying to be front and centre of the division, which is the wrong move, mm-hmm. uh, talking about Brandy here. Uh, but I think that, you know, Big Swole certainly right now doesn't have the character to, to lead that revolution. Um, they could have done with somebody else, perhaps. So obviously, there's numerous names you could bring up from the independent circuit or XWWE people. Um, but, you know, we'll see what happens. You know, I'm, I, obviously, she does fantastic. And, and obviously, if they can bring uh, people from NWA, um, you know, that will be, you know, that will be really interesting to see. I think what they've happens. got a lot of talent. They just need to, like, look, I love the Brit and Big Swall thing. I think it's been a great way of using Brit on TV. But at some point, it has to become a serious match as well. And mm. while Brit's a, a great character that we all laugh at, um, it also, at some point, it needs to become a fight. And we're yeah. going to get that all out, I assume, which is fine. But this being the only segment on it just didn't work for me. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Next up, we have Matt Hardy and Sammy Guevara in a tables match. This yeah. was brilliant. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, um, great to see um, Sammy get the win. You know, really surprising. Um, and, you know... Just, just a great match all around. There was a fortuitous uh, bleed uh, in Sammy Guevara, who, who you know uh, caught himself, and I don't think it was a blade job. He actually caught himself, which I think when he was going through a table, yeah. There, there's the quote unquote blood feud that they get. These guys are having at the moment. Uh, Matt brings out the deleted table, and, and then uh, Sammy goes through it. Uh, Matt sold and put over Sammy, which I think is the right decision here at this point. Uh, Matt Hardy has still not. Um, Found his found his um, way, I think. Found his footing in AEW, um, which could be to do with the crowds. It could be to do with numerous things. Um, but um, but yeah, I mean, I mean, I, he did great, and he put over Sammy, which I think is the right move. Um, all in all, some good moments between the two. A good dynamic between the two. Um, a happy accident, I believe. Jericho called it with the chair. When which when led, Sammy did it to Matt and the same led, again, yeah, which, which led to of course this match and this thing and of course another happy accident with the blade, uh, was sorry not with the blade, um, with the, with Sammy's cut with, tonight, with yeah, the blood, yeah. So, so some glad. of the parts that I loved about this match was when Matt Hardy got out of the ring and started throwing the chairs at, uh, at Sammy, and these were the chairs that Sammy had thrown at, at Matt the weeks prior, and we'd seen sort of his bust up and and how he was using that to try and hurt Sammy. Um, obviously, we've been told that Sammy wasn't supposed to use that chair; he was supposed to use another chair, and that's why he, that was why it was so heavy. But actually, to see that in the match and see Matt Hardy slinging him across, I thought mm-hmm. was really effective. Sammy's yeah. selling is outstanding. That part when he went over the top rope and crumpled up as he fell to the floor was brilliant. Fantastic. The part when he was laid upon the table, obviously moved out of the way Matt Hardy going through the table wicked and then we get the deleted table uh, which is obviously a great call out for for Matt Hardy yeah. and obviously he ended up getting put through it we get the, the twist of fate we get every this was great it was yeah, the such a onto the chair was great yeah yeah man and Matt Hardy when he went through the table there was a chair under it as well so it wasn't just like going through a table it was, it was a really fun match man I agree I agree absolutely, absolutely. next up we had Orange Cassidy we have Orange Cassidy sprinting out to Sammy Guevara just celebrating and in the background we just see a, a, a person fly across the screen and it was Orange Cassidy who completely rugby tackled Jericho off the chair and ended up scrapping while a load of zebras tried to pull them off yeah, loads of referees. You know, a great continuity for the for the uh, storyline. Sammy comes out to try and help Jericho, so comes down uh, and tries to separate them. But of course, that they don't. The aggression is there. The the uh, the development of the story is there. Most importantly, going into this kind of silly, crazy mimosa match. Um, you know, I think it, it certainly adds to the to the aggression. Uh, to the uh, to the just just the general vibe of this is fantastic. The storyline is fantastic, and a great work really from both of them. Great character work from both of them to sell just how frustrated and just how much they they quote unquote hate each other, how much they dislike each other. Really going into that uh, sort of gimmick match. I had a slight issue with it. I wanted a spot. 
I wanted some spot to close the show. I wanted some spot for us to look back on some something for us to whether that was. Uh, I want to, I nearly called him pockets. Whether that was Orange Cassidy doing a, a hands in the pockets dive onto Jericho yeah. using one of the tables or something like that that was out on ring. I wanted something that was slightly more visual than just the sort yeah. of attack. I understand yeah. what you're saying you about the them. Superman, you got the Superman punch, but that was about yeah. it. Yeah, but that's not really you know what I mean, that's just a that's just a move as opposed to a, a spot. There was constantly going at each other and I get it. I just didn't want the referees there really. Uh, yeah. what I wanted is I wanted, you know, to see some him climb to the top of the um the ring circles and do his pocket spots through a table you know that would have made a lot of sense to me and been something great to sort of look back on um with the, with the silliness of the match i don't think it needs to be an aggressive feud and this was sold as a fight feud and actually the match that we're getting isn't really a fight feud does that make sense yeah absolutely absolutely i mean like i say it definitely there was a lot of aggression a lot of intensity there which we don't normally associate with certainly cassidy uh, but but really, you know, you're getting that side of him and you get that character trait, which I think we needed. We needed that character trait and that evolution of Cassidy and Jericho has sufficiently and effectively bought that out of him. Indeed. So uh, what was your rating for the show, Dom? How many? Three, give me a whole year stars. Three, three out of five. Three. Yeah, I'm going three and a half. Really entertaining, really entertaining night. Um, what matches didn't you like? Because three is quite well, low and you've enjoyed every match so far you said i enjoyed i enjoyed uh, matt hardy <laughs> and sammy the most uh, i would call sammy Guevara my performer of the night cool uh, yeah i'd go with I, sammy I as would a match say my worst match was the second was the um i believe we're talking we'd be we'd be looking at books and best friends Best friends, even though I'm really high on best friends. Right cool. Um, so, yeah, I'd say three and a half. I thought it was a really good show. Uh, Sammy Gravara, performer of the night. I thought he was outstanding in the ring. Um, if not him, Adam Page, I thought was delightful, like selling the seriousness of the angle. And what's the other thing we do? Best match, obviously, the last match. Rock yeah. and roll. I want to know your Give Me a Whole Year star ratings in the comments down below. Let's rock through your comments. Thank you all so much for, for joining us, and I appreciate you waiting for us to read out all your comments. And we will get to them now. Uh, Alex Smith says, What if Hangman costs Omega in their tag team match against FTR to get back at the Elite and joins FTR? Then Kenny blames the Young Bucks for Paige turning on him and leaves the Elite. Yeah, that makes sense. Then becomes the cleaner. Alex has is... done some real good booking recently. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I agree with that. And it might be a good good uh, segue into the Four Horsemen. Uh, Joey says, great show. We appreciate you joining us for the show, Joey. We always appreciate having you there, dude. Um, Alex says, I'm very impressed with Trent Beretta in AEW. I hear he was good in New Japan and even took Kenny to his limits in one match against him. Yeah, Beretta's great, man. He's, he's got a lot of talent. So, you know, be, I mean, I'd be interested to go back and watch that match. So I might try and find it. Uh, yeah, he's just not doing it for me in AEW, Trent Barretta at all. Uh, the best friends out there, to be honest. I think it's, I think it's sort of the goofiness of the uh, cuddle and that sort of stuff. I also think hey, there's, there's other. The cuddle, man, what's wrong with the good? Yeah, cuddle? um, I, I also sort of think there's other tech teams like Hybrid Two, um, and Sonny and Janella that I'd much rather see in their sort of position, really, personally. Um, I, I mean, I think they've I think they've been really entertaining on on in the main. I think they probably need to break away from Orange Cassidy to be taken seriously. Maybe maybe that's uh, what it more is. seriously. But but I think they I think they deserve to be in the position they're in. Alex says, "Is Hager in the battle royal? Um, not as of yet. He was on Dark last night against Marco Stunt. Um, but the he's not announced yet. I assume he will be. I think he'll be. I think he'll be announced." Yeah. I think he'll be announced um, yeah. soon. Yeah. yeah but one of the things I'd say about the Battle Royale is we need more faces in it. We really need more faces. So uh, that's cool if you're going to add more heels, but it can't just be Darby Allen that's the only face. <laughs> Unless yeah, he's going to no, win. No, they definitely need more faces in there. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Thoughts on Jay White? I've seen a little of him and he's become world champ in New Japan. Also, Dom yeah. kind of looks like Jay White with that beard. Oh, hey. Yeah. That's a nice compliment. Thank you. Yeah, he's a, he's a good-looking lad, very talented as well. Uh, massively into Jay White, who was rumored to be joining a, 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 a rumored to be joining WWE for a period of time, but I'm assuming COVID, because I think it was the beginning, middle of this year that that was supposed to happen. Uh, but I'm assuming COVID sort of halted those plans. I know WWE are quite high on him. Obviously, he's a New Japan World Champion now, so he's not going anywhere for a while. 
but again, one of the great. He's a New Zealand lad, but one of the, the one of the greatest sort of talents from uh, the Indies. I know he's had some time in Ring of Honor as well. One of the greatest talents from the Indies. A great heel, uh, a look and a style very similar to Kendrick Brian Kendrick. Um, and, you know, and obviously, if you're following that example and that style, you can't really go too far wrong as a technical and an entertaining performer. Um, but yeah, very, very, very high on on Jay White for myself. Yeah, um, I don't know enough. About, I haven't seen enough of Jay White to be perfectly honest to comment. Uh, wasn't there a casino ladder match a few pay per views ago when Page won? There was, and I really didn't enjoy that match actually. Um, but this isn't a casino ladder match. This is a battle royal. So they've done a couple of these, and uh, what they do is they have so each competitor in groups of fives, and maybe the Joker. They normally had the Joker with Adam Page. I think this is the match stipulation. Uh, gets one of one of four cards, one of the suits of cards, and then them suits of cards are brought out to the ring in that order. So at the start, you'll have 10 people in the ring, and then the hearts will be called out, and then the five people who have hearts card will go out, uh, and then with spades as well. And then they tend to have a joker, which uh, the first all out was Adam Page, and he ended up winning it for the title shot against Jericho at the first uh, AEW pay-per-view. Uh, so... Um, that I assume they're going to use that stipulation and actually it sort of breaks up the action a little bit so you don't just have 20 men in the ring which is a, a good idea really because if not you, you're you not going to get all these stories and there's so many stories going into this battle royal um, I don't know if that was a question um, yeah I, I think that's was- Partly answered. I'm very impressed with how AEW has built Ricky Starks. At first, I wanted Darby versus Cage, but now I want Starks versus Darby. Ricky feels about as big as Cage. It's amazing. Yeah, I agree with that. We were comparing him to The Rock in '99, uh, so the the late '90s. Uh, I think he's got that style, that look, and I think he'll be as big if you know he could be as big as The Rock on a mainstream, or uh, you know, certainly on a wrestling. Uh, sort of platform uh, you know absolutely absolutely really sold on Starks and I think Darby is the I actually think Starks might go over Darby I think he uh, will so yeah, yeah no, I think he will. obviously I think I think Darby doesn't necessarily need the win to be a popular no. No. star um, so I think Starks is going over Darby and I think it will be a great stepping stone for him yeah I agree um, I think he's got a lot of potential man a lot of potential Thoughts on Nick Aldis? I saw his world title run in TNA. I hear he's a, the NWA champ. Also, I hear people say his style is slow. Uh, do you want to start this one, dude? Uh, methodical, I'd say, Nick Aldis' style. I think he's really good. He had a match in AEW against Cody that was really good. Um, I've seen a couple of his matches, and he entertains me. And also, Dom spoke to him as well. Um, he's, he's a really engaging guy, actually. The interview he did with him was really good, Dom. Um, yeah, that's that's what I'm saying. Yeah, thanks, man. Yeah, I mean, I, I think he's one of the most more engaging promos as a world champion there is in wrestling. Uh, he certainly has the legacy and the uh, the chops, so to speak, to be uh, you know to be a world champion in AEW. I would have said as well. I know he's close to you know top guys in the industry like Edge uh, from our chat. Uh, but you know whether you know, I think he, he missed out on a WWE opportunity for some backstage, some politicking, as we know goes on in the industry. And I know there was a few reasons why he missed out on that uh, WWE opportunity. You can, of course, go into that, our in-depth interview where he kind of talks with me um, at me uh, for a long time, and we have a really long chat, and he goes quite in depth. Uh, and that's lower down on the channel if you go back in our videos. So he does talk about his time in wrestling and his history and his thoughts on WWE and AEW, uh, as well as NWA, where he is current champion. But yeah, I could see him on a high, on a high, uh, you know, high standing on an AEW card. Absolutely. Yeah, I think it'd be good for him to come in. So doing this sort of NWA crossover because they're not putting on matches, why not keep people entertained in the NWA products by having them appear on uh, on AEW? And I think the top guy that AEW would go for in that situation would be Nick Aldis. Mm, absolutely, I agree. If you had your choice. Yeah. yeah. Uh, cool. Uh, New Jack is going to kill MJF. Uh, yeah, he did uh, mention him during the promo. Well, uh, whether we see New Jack in, in AEW is a completely different matter. Um, you know, I, I mean, I, I would I'd say he's more likely to show up in, in Impact Wrestling, and, you know, than he is in AEW. Uh, if he's going to show up anywhere for one, for one night and probably one 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 spot where he has nothing to do with any ladders or tables or chairs. Or <laughs> knives. 
Yes. Or, or scaffolding. Uh, yeah, or scaffolding. Um, Alex Smith carries on. Uh, lawyers are bad and sneaky people. He deserves this match against Mox. <laughs> um, yeah, man, it'll be interesting, entertaining. We'll see what happens next week. But we can't tarnish all lawyers <laughs> with the same brush. No, no. Uh, Renzo says hello. Hello. He's got a new video out. It's the Katsuru Shibati Titan Tron. Awesome, man. I'm going to go check that out as soon as we finish. Uh, for those of you that haven't seen Renzo's channel, he makes uh, custom videos for entrances. Really good stuff. Go check him out, even if you just want to listen to some music. But it's, it's entertaining and he does a good job. So uh, we always give him a shout out. Uh, to me, Blade kind of looks like Champa. Also, thoughts on Champa's heel turn um, uh, I think Blade is great uh, I got a lot of time for Blade as a talent uh, Champa's heel turn I think it was necessary I think it legitimises him in this fatal four way Iron Man thing um, I think he is the closest kind of to, to, to carry and cross in terms of you know a, a scary legitimate bad guy in that fatal four way um, and I, I understand the reason for him being in there. Uh, I think he's come at a very good time. Rock and roll. Um, the Fear Factor combo by the Lucha Bros, indeed, Renzo. The wrestler Katsuro Shibata. Um, yeah, lawnmowers were strange. Um, Alex says, I'm so happy for Brody. Uh, Dom is, definitely. Um, I'm hap- I'm well, I'm not happy for Brody. I, don't, I couldn't care less if he had a title or not. What I'm happy for is I'm happy for the fact that they're... They've put the TNT Championship, which is a TV championship, on the guy that feels like he's constantly having engaging storylines with AEW. Like, mm-hmm. that's a, that's the right thing to do. So, absolutely, it can go to Brody Lee for me. Uh, Cesaro to AEW is what I want for my birthday. Dude would be awesome in AEW. I think, yeah, I'm not sure it's going to happen, but it would be it's a, it's a good dream booking. Good dream booking. <laughs> Alex Smith says, is Cassio Ono in NXT UK? He was, yeah, um, he but was. he was released from the company. Yeah, unfortunately, he was He was he probably holding up that brand, to be honest, for a long time. I think they've... Uh, they've no, they've... not at all. Nobody, uh, well, we'll agree to disagree on that one. I think really, yeah. you know, no, no, Walter, Pete Dunn, and Trent Seven and Tyler Bate were holding up NXT. No, I think, no, I think they were the kind of pay per view sort of buys, they were the pay per view guys. I think on a weekly basis, you know, Cassius Ono being there was a pretty big deal. Strongly uh, disagree with you. Go on. Okay, well, okay, well we can we can disagree on that one, but <laughs> I, I I hope to see Cassius Ono uh, or Chris Hero rather um, in 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 uh, wrestling organization Impact or AEW soon because he's one of the best workers um, in in wrestling. You yeah, know? I'm quite surprised Cassius Ono hasn't showed up in anywhere yet. Um, I think that'd be great. And if you was to put Cesaro in AEW as well, you could actually reform the Kings of Wrestling as well because it was in a tag mm-hmm. team in Ring of Honor. Uh, do you think there's a chance for Jeff Hardy to go to AEW? I say definitely. Yeah, but not until Jeff's had a title run. So we're looking at two, three years, uh, maybe two years. What, a main title run? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's not happening. Um, he's got an Intercontinental Championship though. Try and keep him. Do you think what? <laughs> I think they're going to give it to him to try and keep him. I don't think he. I don't think he'd stay for that. Um, Glenn Hunt says, "Young uh, Renee Young coming soon." AEW news breaking announced team. Um, I didn't see that on the program tonight, Glenn. But I'd assume. I I, I don't see why she wouldn't do like um, the pay per views, Dom. Uh, yeah, no, absolutely. We said one. You know, one offs a bit yeah. like uh, Wade Barrett has done done for WWE. Um, but paid you know, more money, probably. Paid more uh, money. Yeah, one, one, one offs, you know, one yeah. pay per views. Yeah, one off pay per views would be good. Uh, Joey says the chair under the table was crazy. Indeed, it was. Uh, Joey, give it 3.5, same as me. Uh, Alex says so. Aldis is probably never going to WWE. Uh, what's your thoughts on that, dude? I don't think so. He wasn't very happy with the um, Mozzie, and I don't think that I don't think the treating right, to be perfectly yeah, honest. He's been, he's been very public about his distaste for WWE mm. uh, in numerous interviews, not just ours. Um, um, and I think you know, I mean, if he's had the opportunity, and um, he's he's been scorned by, uh, you know, from 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 our discussion, a lot of people politicked him. You know, he had opportunities to go there, and a lot of people backstage kind of sabotaged his chances. Uh, for whatever reason, not naming any names, of course, uh, but uh, but there were there was there was people that kind of sabotaged his chances. Well, that's what, how he feels about it. And of course, if you, you know, 
there's numerous stories uh, of, of talent going out and trying, you know, WWE and, and living the dream, quote unquote, and then finding out there's a lot of politicking, a lot of politics backstage and a lot of, you know, a lot of uh, people vying for various spots. And I think uh, Nick Aldis has more time for a company where he can be involved, he can work with talent, he can build stuff, he can build a brand. He's very keen on that and very keen on that style of working, which I understand, very Cody Rhodes-esque. Even. Indeed, yeah, um, absolutely. Uh, Kobe says hello. Hello, Kobe. Hello, Kobe. Hope you're well, mate. I'm assuming you've got your review out. I look forward to watching it. We enjoyed the show, to be perfectly honest. Uh, nah, New Jack to AEW, they've banned Hulk Hogan. You think New Jack is coming, lol, <laughs> says Kobe. Yeah, they did ban Hulk Hogan, aren't they? Yeah, I, uh, yeah, I would never say New Jack was going to uh, to uh, AEW, dude. Uh, hello, Alex. Bala um, might be coming to NXT UK in September. Good, good, good. Yeah, because they announced that on NXT, didn't they? Great, great way to pop the ratings. Good stuff. Well, that would mean they wouldn't be champion. Well, we'll see. We'll see. He could, he could be champion. You see, part, part of the reason I think he'd be a good champion is because the match that makes sense at Survivor Series is Fiend, uh, Randy or Drew, and, uh, or Roman, and, and Bala. I don't know if Tomasa Champa would... Maybe if Randy Orton was there, but I don't know if we're changing that many titles. Well, we'll see, won't we? We'll see we we'll will see. indeed see. Um, and Alex says hello. Um, dudes, we're out, we're, we're we're up. We're out of time. Yeah. Um, it has been awesome having you all on. We do really appreciate you. Um, if you did enjoy the review, please remember to hit subscribe. We will be back on Sunday with payback. Uh, we're doing a watch we along of that. And um, is there anything else to say, Dom? No, uh, just gonna just gonna say thanks again. Obviously, check out some of the channel videos, video interviews with various talent, and also uh, some uh, uh, some wrestling rewind stuff. We've got loads of things on the channel, of course. Uh, just let us know, let us know what you like and what you uh, would like to see us do. If you'd like to see us do more history of wrestling stuff, because we have been doing a few of those over lockdown, uh, we'd be happy to do more of those. Yeah, indeed, uh, um, one, Kobe. One Kobe has come up with an idea for us actually next Friday that I need to talk to you about at some point. Um, if you are watching, uh, Kobe has just joined the channel. He's got a great channel. Um, go over there and support him. He's got a five-minute wrestling review of AEW that will be live right now, so go and send him some love. Um, right. Uh, Alex says, last comment, do you think we will see the Demon next Tuesday? What, NXT? Um, no. Uh, I think that's going to be saved for a, for another another uh, event and another opponent, dude. Possibly the fiend uh, Bray Wyatt for me. Uh, Kobe says, "Will Bella have a long reign as UK champion? Uh, I think he might be NXT champion before that, dude. Um, personally, um, I think he might take the NXT title to NXT UK uh, for a one-off thing um, to pop some ratings. Personally." Um, you got any more to add on that one, Anthony? Uh, no, I don't think we'll see Demon Balor because that would say that he's winning and I don't think they'll want to um, forecast that too quickly into a one-hour match. Yep. And uh, I, 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 I don't see him in NXT UK personally, but I think NXT UK has got enough talent and enough stories going on to be able to do some interesting stuff without Balor, to be perfectly yeah. honest. So. Yeah, I'm looking, I'm looking forward to seeing NXT UK back. It's been a long been a long time yes. um, but yeah so thank you guys for watching uh what we do at the end of this podcast as you know is like, uh, like a claymore i count down from five um and uh, we say whole oh, yeah wherever you are of course you can either whisper or shout um so five four three two one this is broken not hot Thank you for watching the Gimme a Whole Year Wrestling Podcast.